Okay, so we have the customer's failed Xbox One hard drive here. This was pulled out of the system. It wouldn't boot with a black screen. And this is going to be the new drive that we're going to put in the system, but we need to format it first. It actually is already formatted, but we're going to do it again. I want to show you the process of actually, you know, clean formatting it. Um, and then later we'll add the uh, OS uh, UDT2 files to it. So we're going to take this over here. We're going to attach it to our laptop. Um, with this laptop, I have this cable connected underneath here to the system. Uh, the reason being this laptop is kind of finicky about hard drives. They have to be a certain thickness to work in this drive. And uh, this drive is actually fine to do that. Um, but for the sake of illustration, and for the sake that normally I do have to do this with most of the drives I connect, um, we'll just do it externally. And then we're going to boot with the flash drive. I just want to show you this is our Ubuntu flash drive we had just created. And we'll boot the system up. And we're going to power this on and then we're going to hit F12 to get our boot menu. And uh, we're going to try without installing. We don't actually want to install it. But uh, and just a note too, so this drive power wise is connected externally here to uh, my desktop. Um, it would make more sense to actually put it in the system if it could fit there because it could actually get the power from the system itself. Uh, this actually boots fairly quickly. And uh, I'm going to try to make this video pretty quick. This seems to trip a lot of people up in terms of uh, just what commands they run to actually format the drive. Um, it's understandable. Uh, not everyone is a big uh, Linux user and it's definitely command line driven here. Uh, but we're going to do everything from the command line in this case as well. So um, as soon as it finishes booting up, I'm going to right click and open a terminal. Now I'm going to try to try to give you some description of the commands I'm running without getting too involved here. Um, the first thing we need to do is figure out where Linux thinks our drive is. Um, and I've showed uh, some, this trips up some people, but uh, we're going to use the dmessage command. What that actually is, it shows us kernel messages at boot time. So one of the things that happens when the system boots is it searches for drives and will find them and give them appropriate labels. So uh, there's the flash drive. There should be two drives in this case. There's the actual 500 gigabyte drive and then there's the flash drive. So we take dmessage and we pipe it into less because if we don't do that, all the content scrolls right by. In fact, if we dmessage, and you don't need to worry about this command, but we're doing a line count. Uh, WC stands for word count, uh, minus L changes its functionality to counting lines. And we'll see that there's, uh, you gotta spell dmessage right. I actually have, uh, looking through my phone, a D message. there you go. So 894, uh, 897 lines rather. Um, so instead of having it scroll by really quickly, what we want to do is pipe it into less. So we're going to take the output of one command and pipe it into the less command. And in doing that, now we can actually just scroll. We, I'm just using the up and down arrows. Uh, my keyboard here to go up and down. Now we need to find the hard drive itself. Um, so I think I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, if I didn't or you didn't watch that video, all the drives in Linux start with SD. And then they're either SDA, SDB, SDBC, depending on how many drives you have attached to the system and what order they get found. Um, this is most likely gonna be A in our case because the hard drive itself is plugged in as the primary drive. And USB is usually considered a lower priority than SATA drives. Uh, so to find which one though, unless we're gonna use a forward slash, I don't really have to show you on the keyboard, but uh, forward slash starts a search and we're simply going to type SD and then press enter. And then it'll immediately start showing all the matches. Now right away, um, that's not an SDA, that, uh, that's not what we're looking for. So we're going to hit the N. So there's two commands here. We want to hit N to keep searching down next. Um, if you want to reverse that, you would actually press uh, Shift N. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like. So we're going to hit N and this is shift N, so you go both directions. So if you go past what you're looking for, you can just hold down shift and then go back. So we're gonna keep pressing. And right away here, we've actually found what we're looking for right away, um, or at least with a few searches. 
there's our 500 gigabyte drive. Uh, we can see down here it's, it has uh, this many partitions. So it's drive A, one, two, three, four, five partitions. And we keep hitting N here. We can see if we can find the flash drive. And there we go, SDB, and there's our flash drive, 16 gigabyte drive. Uh, if yours is a uh, different size, it would show up as that. And um, this thing doesn't have a partition per se. It's just a single, a single partition. Uh, usually the flash drive, I think, I don't think you can partition them. So there's no one, two, three, this is B. All right, so A though, that's the key here that we're looking for. All right, so we're gonna hit Q to close that. So now we know A is what we're looking for. Now this is the part that really screws people up or messes with people a little bit in that to run the scripts I gave them and putting them on the, with the drive and they try to type them and they don't work. Well, that's because uh, scripts or commands expect to be in a certain location to be able to run directly. So for instance, when I run the ls command that lists all the files, the current files and the current uh, directory we're in, but that ls command is in a very particular place. It's in, uh, how do you do that? Oh, you type which ls and it shows you it's in bin. So there's bin, there's s bin, there's user bin, there's user s bin. On Ubuntu, for whatever reason, the flash drive or the root of the flash drive is kept in a special directory. It's media CD-ROM. So we're gonna CD media CD-ROM there, and uh, or CD stands for change directory, and we're gonna CD-ROM. And there's our Xbox uh, One HDD master. So we're gonna CD one more time into Xbox. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm typing, I'm hitting, this is just like in the Windows command, I'm hitting a tab to finish it, so I don't have to type the whole command every time. We'd also directly go to media, CD-ROM, Xbox One Master. But the point is now we're in the directory where those scripts are located. So now when you want to run those scripts, as I was saying before, they're not in bin, they're in a completely different directory. So the system would have no idea how to find them unless we were sitting in the directory where they're located. And even then, if they're not executable, let's see in this case, uh, they actually are executable. They have a bunch of X's there. So we should without, let's see what happens there. So we're gonna, Gonna, now, these commands are running directly against a device which is protected, so we have to put a sudo in front of each command. Um, I didn't mention that earlier, but some commands you can run as a regular user, other commands you have to run as administrator. Anytime you're making changes to a, uh, an attached device, you have to be sudo. So here we're going to type sudo, and I think we can get away with typing create. No, we can't. All right, so we're going to put a dot slash in front, and then create, and then we're going to hit tab to finish the command. See, if I don't put the dot slash and I just type create, it's, it doesn't see it in path. And the ones that do come up when I hit tab are uh, items that actually are in path. So instead we're gonna say dot slash and that tells it that we're looking for scripts in the current directory we're in. And there we go. And so I'm gonna run it one time without actually giving it any parameters. And if I do so, it'll give up, it'll show this help menu, which is actually pretty nice. It tells us how to use the command. Um, these last bits here actually give us a hint as the commands we want to run. Uh, it runs in three stages. Stage zero is strictly to erase the drive. Uh, you don't need to use that because stage one actually does that for us. It'll actually erase the drive and then partition it. Uh, but if you wanted to be clean about it, you could run st stage zero through two and um, wind up with the drive that you wanted to, to have. Now, the great thing about this example is everything here is correct except for that B part. So we found our drive is actually A, not B. So we could do a couple things here to cheat the command. Um, I'm not gonna do that, I'm actually gonna type it out, but you could use your mouse here to kind of click and drag across the command and copy it. And then you could do a uh, control insert, shift insert. But we're not going to do that for now. We're actually going to type them out. So we're going to do a sudo dot slash again, and we're going to type create. We're going to start with CRE. There's only one CRE in this, this uh, directory, so we just hit tab. And then uh, we're going to specify the drive. Now, this, uh, this states that we can use a minus D, or we can use a longer dash dash, and then the, the actual drive name. So some people like long. Uh, it's called a command argument, and some people like short. I like the short because you have to type less. So uh, dash D is fine. And then, uh, so that's in place of this dash dash drive. And then we want to actually give it the full path to where the drive is we're going to work on. So we're going to say slash dev 
SDA in our case. And then we want to specify the stage, and the stage is the same thing here. Uh, minus S is the short, and dash dash stage is the long, so we're going to do minus S. And um, I'm going to do all three steps just for the sake of just showing you them all working. Um, so here we go. So we're going to do stage zero first, which will erase the drive. And we'll see dev SDA has been successfully wiped. Now, so you saw has uh, running a sudo, it didn't even say, hey, you want to do this. It just did it. So that's part of the reason why on this system I actually pulled the drives out and only had the Xbox One drive attached. There's no risk then to destroying your primary drive. Um, now it said basically complete and it's telling us what to do next. And it's telling us next we should run stage one. Um, now, like I said, you don't need stage zero. You could just do stage one. I just wanted to show you that. Let's say you just wanted to wipe a drive. That would do it for you. And then you have a completely clean drive, uh, meaning that all the partitions are gone. It's just an empty drive. So now we're going to do stage one. So all we have to do, oh, just <laughs> more Linux shortcuts. If you uh, hit the up arrow one time, it will go back to immediately the last command. Um, so our last command was zero, but I already changed it to one. So we're going to do stage one this time. So that's a pretty nice shortcut. You don't have to type everything twice. And we're going to hit enter on that. Now this command is actually going to create all the partitions. So you're going to see a bit more happening here. And on the left-hand side there, here in this little bar, you can actually see the partitions getting created uh, and showing up in the GUI. It's pretty cool. And it's all pretty automatic. It uh, calculates the proper size for the user partition. Um, otherwise, every other partition is created in the same manner it should be. The reason being is the script used to be used to put in a larger drive, a two terabyte drive or something like that, and it would calculate what the, um, when I say user partition, here, let me, uh, there we go, these are, a user content is actually what I was looking for, but it's the second partition user content. I'll show you in a second what that looks like, but um, it would automatically see that you had a large drive in there and just make that user content uh, partition larger as a result, but this is only a 500 gigabyte drive, so it's going to create the 500 gigabyte drive as a standard drive. Okay, uh, standard Xbox One drive, and then now we have the last step. step. And actually, um, step one, uh, stage one, and stage two are very important. Uh, you have to run them both. Stage two doesn't actually create the uh, the partitions; they're already created. What it does is it gives them the right unique identifier. Um, to kind of illustrate that, let's come back. Let's actually run our script here without any arguments. And stage three, it says, you know, rewrite GUIDs. And that means on the partitions, it gives them a unique identifier. So let me just show you what that actually does. So I said there's two scripts. One is the list. One is the create, which is the first script there. And then the other is the list. So we can actually do sudo and dot slash list. And then this command is slightly different. Um, I think that it, I don't think there's a help on it. Yeah, it just complains that it doesn't know what you're doing. Uh, this one, you just give a single argument, which is the um, the name of the drive. You don't put dev in front of this one, you just give it SDA. And you hit enter on that. And it shows you basically what you've got. So it show, it's looking for that SDA, it was looking directly at the SDA drive, and you can see there's five partitions. The user content being the most important, um, but those uh, GIDs there, see the all the way to the left, all the, that long string of numbers? Uh, the Xbox One expects those to be particular numbers, and I'll show you. So when we run, we're going to hit the up arrow here, and we're going to get back to our stage one command. Or I already changed the stage two, but there's a stage two command. And we're going to hit enter on this, and we're actually going to change the GUIDs. And it's going to do, it should do this five times. And now, when we run, see that GUID rewrite complete? Now when we rerun our list command, you'll see that in the leftmost column, all those values have changed. Those values are standard Xbox One hard drive values. Every Xbox One hard drive has this um, configuration, has these GUIDs attached to the partitions. Normally, when you create a partition, it randomizes the GUID, um, and that's fairly typical. But for Xbox One, it uses very specific GUIDs. If these are incorrect, uh, I'm almost 100% sure that you would get an E200 if you booted the drive, uh, meaning that those partitions aren't valid. Um, in fact, the E200 
is, uh, to me, anyways, it, there's a lot of things that cause it, but I think the most specific thing that it's, it's saying is that the uh, system update partition is missing. If, uh, if we deleted this partition specifically, we had the wrong ID, the drive is missing, the drive has failed, uh, you'd get, almost always you get an E200. Uh, as we saw in this case, we're not actually getting even that. We're getting, um, we're getting basically a blank screen. Um, so just to illustrate that one more time. So if we do that second stage, you could run this a hundred times if you wanted to. I just want to show you that uh, there's no point to running it a hundred times, but I'm going to show you now. If we list it again, all those values again, they're the same because that was the end result. Uh, and that's it. So essentially at this point, um, you're done. So as long as the list shows these values that you see right in front of you um, and the partitions are in the order that you see, um, you're good to go. And that's it. You have a properly formatted drive. So what we're going to do here now is take the drive off of the system, attach it to Windows, and then copy the proper um, files over to system update. And, uh, and then try to boot the system. We'll see kind of what happens there. All right, so that's uh, that's the Linux part. I just want to mention in the future, I actually would like to change these to be Windows scripts, so we're not actually booting into Ubuntu and just do the entire process through Windows. I don't think that would be all that difficult to do, and I'm pretty sure I could just make it a command line script that you could potentially just click on in Windows Explorer. But that'll be another video for another day. Um, I'll probably work on that this week. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I'll let you know either way. If I run into problems where it just can't be done or I'm you know, having issues getting it to work, I'll let you know. But otherwise, uh, again, there we go. Uh, that's a, a new build drive. So basically, we'll shut down Ubuntu here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, we can exit our terminal here by typing exit. Clicking the power here over in the corner and say shut down. And then click this big box here. Uh, it always says, you know, remove the medium. That's fine. Just press enter. As if you had a, an actual install, you would want to disconnect things and just reboot. But in this case, we don't want to use Ubuntu anymore. We're done. So uh, we can basically just disconnect our drives and we'll take it over to the system. All right. And there we go. Thanks for watching.